everyone, it is Toby here, back for another video. And in today's video, I'm coming at you with another DIY strongman equipment tutorial. Last time I did the axle bar, and you guys seem to love that tutorial. So this time, I am here with a bit of a two-in-one. We're gonna be making a strongman yoke, but also in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make a loading pin without welding or buying one or anything uh, to use in the yoke. But I don't have access to a welder or anything like that. Um, I just have some scraps around the house. I don't know how to weld myself and I also do not have the money to buy uh, a couple loading pins because they they could be quite expensive. The Mirafit ones are up towards 40 quid, 40 pounds, that sort of thing. So I don't really have the money to buy two of them, 80 quid. I'd rather spend that money on other stuff. I spent it on the chains and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to make a chain yoke from the bottom up. So starting with the loading pins, then obviously the chains and the top bit. Um, yeah, let's jump straight into it. So if you have loading pins, you have two or three of these loading pins uh, already, then you can skip this part of the tutorial. But this part, I'm going to show you how to make uh, one of these DIY loading pins that work quite well. So yeah, if you already have them, skip this, or if you want to buy them and not make your own, also just skip this part. But what you need for the bottom of the chain yoke is you need somewhere to put weight on. You need some plates. You need some plate storage, and you need to be able to connect that to the chains. So what you need is you need a loading pin or two. So you need two loading pins, one for each side. Uh, and if you don't already have them, then this is how you are going to get them. So this is my DIY loading pin made with a... Again, piece of scaffolding pole actually left over from when I made the axle bar. I had another smaller pole that I've now cut into two. I spent all morning sawing uh, and cut it into two. And then we've got uh, it bolted together with some other stuff to make it into a loading pin and coated in duct tape at the bottom, which we'll all explain. But I spent all morning drilling holes in these things as well uh, to get them prepared and ready. But yeah, the basic premise of this is obviously it has to be uh, slightly less than two inches to fit plates around it and have a base that is slightly bigger than two inches. So what I've got here is I've got a, a duct taped up base so you can't really see what's going on. I've actually left the other one without duct tape so you can see what's going on, but we're gonna work from the top down in the order I did this. So what I did first is if I switch the camera around, I could show you a bit better. So what I did first was the top part of the mechanism where you connect your carabiner to connect the chains. And that is just simply done with this piece of metal uh, tape, this metal wire stuff. This stuff is really, really strong. In order to get through it, you can't just cut it with pliers or anything. You have to properly hacksaw it. So I have no worry about this breaking whatsoever. It is nice and malleable, so you can bend it to how you want. But again, you have to use something pretty heavy duty to help you bend it. And I've just used this, like, this bolt here that goes through the hole and then this small little key here to go through the hole in the end of the bolt to lock it in place. This is, of course, is what you take off. Uh, you can take that off and then you can slide the bolt right out, take this off and put plates on. So this one here, I don't have the bolt on it. The bolt is over there on the sandbag. So you just slide plates on the top and they obviously rest down the bottom. These are really easy. All you need is, you can get these anywhere, these little bolts that have like a key at the end. And if you have a bolt without a key, but it's got a hole in, then just use a bit of wire. So let me just pop the key back in there. Really easy to slip in and slip off. Just make sure you don't lose the key. That's why I've got this key ring thing in it. I'm going to attach something brightly colored to it. So if I drop it out outside, then I won't worry about it. But once you've got plates on, obviously you attach this to a carabiner. We'll get onto that next. But the plates rest on this base plate here, which again is bolted on using some of that metal wire coated in duct tape because it's quite sharp. So what I'll do is I'll switch over to the other one, which is completely plain. So what I've got here is I've got a big washer. You guys might recognize this if you're a long-term fan of the channel. I used to use this on my five-foot bar so I could put um, two-inch plates on it. But yeah, what I have here is a two, a big, big fat washer that's like way more than two inches big. Some more of that metal plate, another hole with a bolt through it to hold it on in place. And then in the bottom, I've got a bit of wire here which um, is bent round it and then hammered down. So if this was even to move side to side, which there's a little bit of give here when you don't have the duct tape on it, then it won't be able to fall off and it really tightens everything up. So I just hammered that down. As you can see, it's not completely flush, but once you get the duct tape on the bottom here, it flushes it all out and makes it a lot nicer. Uh, and obviously over time, this will likely wear out if you're using it on 
gravel, tarmac, that sort of thing. But duct tape is a cheap enough resource and it's strong and it just adds a whole level of stability to it as well. There is absolutely no play, no movement in this. There's a little bit, but absolutely none uh, as far as big movement is concerned. It is really, really strong, sturdy, which is good. So yeah, once this is duct taped up and they're both duct taped up, uh, we can move on to making the chain yoke. So the next step of the chain yoke is obviously the chains and the bar. So what you want to use for this is any old bar, barbell, scaffolding pole like the axle bar, any sort of pole like that. Luckily enough, I've got a barbell I can use. And you need some chains or some rope or something like that. Obviously, I'm lucky that I have these lifting chains that slot on to the bar and you can tighten up. But honestly, you don't need these. Any chain will do that you can just wrap around and connect with a carabiner to the top of the yoke. Obviously, you do this on both sides. Uh, and then you pretty much have your chain yoke. So you load up the plates, uh, the loading pins with weight like I have. You attach chains, rope, the carabiner to the top, round a bar at the top that's either scaffolding pole, barbell, anything like that. And then you're ready to go. So all that's left to do is to give it a test run. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick it up on my back. Uh, just do a pick up real quick, show you how it hangs, that sort of thing. And then we'll take it outside and take it for a test run. So there you have it, taking it out of the rack for the first time, obviously. Getting it out of the rack's a lot easier than getting it off the floor. But yeah, what we'll need to do, get under it like a squat, low bar position, set our feet. And then once you get out, big belly breath. And then you can see it's quite unstable. Like if you get off, you get really thrown about the place, but the weights are hanging, you're in a yoke and you can get moving. Well, there you have it. It seems to work very well. I worked up to 225 kilo for 10 meters, then I did 250 kilo for four meters. You saw the 225 kilo set as my test run. And as you can see, it's really unstable, but it works the core really well. I feel good, it felt strong. And after taking all the weight off, that was a considerable amount of weight, a quarter of a ton it held. And the loading pins are still absolutely fine. Absolutely on there rigidly. There's absolutely no movement this thing isn't going anywhere you can see i whack it against myself duct tape got a little shredded that's to be expected but yeah this thing very very sturdy can hold at least 250 kilos without any sort of problem so very very happy with that i'm very very happy with the numbers i could do on it so that's going to become a big part of my training i hope it's been very useful for you guys to see how to make one and how to make your own loading pins for it as well it's a completely welding free tutorial obviously it goes without saying if you could buy loading pins or get someone to weld you them they're going to be a lot better than these homemade alternatives this is just if you don't have the other alternatives like i don't this is a way you can do it but i'd recommend getting it welded or buying them online rather than doing that but yeah anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the tutorial as i said if you like the video please leave a like down below it helps me more than you think and of course subscribe if you made it this far into the video and want to see more training more tutorials anything like that i love doing this it's an absolutely amazing hobby for me of course remember comment down below if it helped you out if it didn't any feedback you want to give any ideas you want me to do in the future any things you want me to build any ideas that sort of thing Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Toby and I will see you in the next video.